I kind of resonate with that, like not being great at your sport to begin with. I was rubbish at my sport to begin with, <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't that that sort of deterred me. It was the thing that going and watching professionals play, going and watching games where my heroes were playing and just kind of being a spectator to begin with and then just hanging in there and then that just purely being driven by that that sort of awe of of them and that whole experience and then and then eventually you get better you grow into your body you maybe hit the racket a little bit more I hit the cricket ball a little bit more bowled it a little bit more and you just naturally become better and then bang there's a moment where you're like I'm not bad at this I can I can probably deal with this as you're as you're growing up did you have someone who inspired you was there was there someone in the badminton world that inspired you or like me I never actually had cricket heroes I had actually it was probably other athletes that really were inspirations for me yeah it's funny you should say that actually because when people say who's your badminton hero similarly to you I'm like oh I don't know if I've got a badminton hero you know I admired a huge amount of players but I wasn't that immersed in top level badminton because it's not a very visible thing you know it's not in the media loads I was actually really inspired by a lot of Olympic athletes so you know yeah um Denise Lewis Steve Redgrave um all of these Mm. incredible athletes that I'd watched had have these huge emotional moments on my tv screen um you know when the Olympics was in Beijing me and my mum basically switched our body clocks to like we were in Beijing it was a bit ridiculous and probably slightly (laughs) healthy you know we watched every moment of it we lived and breathed this passion of these athletes and um you know I remember seeing um the rowers and Matthew Pinson was bawling his eyes out on the podium and it's moments like that that really stick with you and I think you go god I want to experience that I want to feel those feelings and get involved with that and you know, I always say I was probably not ever the, the talented or the natural badminton player, um, but my talent was my kind of work ethic and my drive. And, um, you know, because I had that, I just, like, a bit like you, I persisted. I just kept hitting shuttles. I kept trying things out. I spent a lot of time on court. And um, I just, yeah, I really loved it and I really wanted to experience the things that I'd seen those athletes experience, you know, those real sort of, highs and um you know I didn't know at the time there was a lot of laws that came with it as well but um that was definitely a, a big driver for me I love that you you called your talent your drive that was your your talent I, th- <laughs> I, I love that that was I, I I I too believe that was one of my my talents because I, I always grew up saying like I don't believe in talent I don't mm. I just don't believe in talent because I I see so many people that are talented and I'm I don't see myself as talented. I've never told that I'm talented. Part of what I did, I was just never, no one, I never had a coach tell me you're talented or you're gifted. It was just like, oh, you're trying really hard. You're working really hard. And it wasn't until I was a lot older that I actually accepted that that is my talent. That is my, that is my skill set. That is my strong suit. That's my strength. Run with it. Because you can throw that in any direction. And you said there that you had, uh, you had failures you you had my downs and low moments did you have them early on like when you were younger when you were growing up like were you did you start getting into badminton and, and excel or was it a bumpy road it was definitely a bumpy road um you know I was like I say I grew up in Cumbria north of Cumbria so <laughs> everywhere was a long way um so you know I spent a lot of the time mm. traveling really far to tournaments it was quite hard for me to be visible on the English badminton scene like I went up to Scotland and played a little bit there um so you know if I was going to be seen in England the closest tournament was maybe two and a half hours away uh, and so it's a huge commitment from my parents um and you know I really saw that and I've learned a lot from that you know and got a lot of my character from seeing them sort of commit in that way um but I think I was I think I was 13 years old when I first got on the England program so it's kind of like a junior funding they'll help you find a coach in your area. Although that was a difficult in itself because they were like, oh, you're not really near any of these coaches that we have registered. I was like, oh, sorry, about that. I'll just move. Will I? Um, but, you know, there was a few challenges like that, of course. Um, but I got put on at 13 and I was on for one one year and went to a few of the junior camps, had an okay year in tournaments, didn't really, really excel, you know, just kind of improved at a normal level. And the following year I was taken off funding. Um, and it was a huge sort of 
it was a bit of a kick in the teeth at the time but then also now looking back I know what a crucial moment that was for me and for how I am as a person because I literally mem- remember the conversation when we were sat in the kitchen uh, my parents were there and they were like look this is what we're up against you know it's a huge financial thing it's a huge time thing you're going to miss loads with your friends the training is going to be really hard there's no guarantee you're going to make it but if you want to if you're going to if you want to put the work in and if you're determined and you're passionate we will absolutely do all those things we'll find a way we'll find you a coach we will travel around the country and give you the best chance we can and i think i don't even think there was a, a nanosecond of break i was just like yeah of course you know there was no doubt in my mind that was what i wanted to do and that i wanted to give it the best shot um, and again, at the time, I didn't really realise what a huge commitment that was from them and from the people around me. You know, we found sponsorship from local companies. Uh, we had friends that would coach us. We pulled all sorts of favours with the council to get caught. Um, and, you know, it was a huge sort of thing um, for my parents on just an organisational side of things. Um, but actually, you know, we, we did all that stuff. I worked really hard. I was even more determined to kind of go hey, I'm in England, actually, I, I am good enough and I'll show you I'm good enough um, in a sort of, like, I'll prove you wrong way. Um, and one year later, I got back on from then. You know, I had a brilliant year of tournaments. I, I kind of beat people that I never should have beaten. Um, my dad said he was stood, stood on the balcony at one tournament and I was playing a girl and they were going, who's this girl on the end playing? Who's she? We've never seen her before. And, you know, I got to the semi-final of a Nationals and it's kind of, Something that has shaped me massively was them going, no, you're not good enough. And I went, no, I believe that I am. You know, I'm not even, I wasn't even deterred by them really taking me off. I was actually driven by it and spurred on by it. And it was kind of a real character building thing. And, you know, looking back now, I know that now I can go, well, if times get difficult or things are hard, instead of being like, oh, like, war me, it's really done backing off. I'm like, no, no, I can fight this. I can grow from this. I can be better from it and um, I honestly think if that hadn't happened I don't know if I'd be here now um, you know with kind of the results that I've I've had fortunately. (laughs) 